Hello everybody, Hassan here, engineer, MBA, and investor. And in today's video, I want to talk about the earnings bonanza week all over this week from different, different companies. More, But more specifically, I want to talk about CRISPR Therapeutics earnings uh, yesterday. I want to talk about one article from Caribou Biosciences and what's going on with the company. And I actually wanted to end this video with a quick note on Facebook, uh, totally unrelated from the content we usually uh, publish, but I want to talk a little bit about Facebook, the metaverse. Before we do that, guys, before we do talk about these topics, please do like this video, smash that like button, destroy that like button, guys, really helps this channel. I appreciate the support, guys, just underneath this video. Hit that like button, guys. YouTube algorithms, you guys know the drill. Subscribe if you haven't, guys. If you want our videos to get to you faster, hit that notification bell. Again, it's free, it's quick, it's easy, it helps the channel. And ultimately, we want to provide you information for free, knowledge for free, and knowledge is power. So yesterday, CRISPR Therapeutics, they published uh, their uh, second quarter 2021 uh, financial results. And again, if if you follow this channel, if you follow this space, you know, these types of quarter earnings don't really break out that much because, again, some of the data that they publish for CTX001, which is their leading program, and the pipeline, which we believe in 2022 will be FDA approved. Again, that's just speculation. Uh, you know, you sort of know what's going on with the company. You know what's going on with the data updates, uh, whether that's for CTX001, whether that's for CTX130, for example. All these updates are usually published to different virtual conferences, and we cover those conferences in this channel. If you watch our pre previous videos, if you've been updated with our videos, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, but it's always nice to have a refresher. It's always nice to have these quarterly earnings uh, calls, especially with uh, these types of companies that are very, very R&D focused, very, very you know focused on the long term, because you want to make sure that the leadership is still intact you want to make sure that everyone is on the same page and you get you know additional updates in, ter in terms of cash on hand in terms of financial revenues again there are other companies that are well more established that these types of earnings are extremely important because you want to see for example with amazon how, how much revenue did they make from aws for example right specific results like that for well-established companies but for these types of companies that don't really have any commercial product yet uh, you'll usually find these updates throughout the year, throughout the months, throughout the weeks, through different virtual conferences, different press releases. But again, always important to know what's going on uh, in terms of financial side of things in these uh, earnings report. And that's what I want to talk about really quickly. Uh, so first of all, uh, uh, CRISPR Therapeutics uh, CEO, Dr. Sam, we concluded an important quarter in which we reported notable data in our hemoglobin program while rapidly advancing our entire clinical and preclinical portfolio and our capabilities. Updated clinical data on CTX001 presented at EHA, which we did cover, guys, demonstrate consistency and durability further validating the promise of a functional cure for sickle cell disease and beta thalassemia. We expect to report clinical data for our immunology programs later this year and to file multiple INDs for regenerative medicine and in vivo programs in the next 18 to 24 months. And then that, in addition, we continue to expand our portfolio through collaboration as they announced with Capsida Biotherapeutics and Encarta Therapeutics. Uh, we actually covered uh, this news here um, a few weeks ago as well. Uh, so again, nothing new, nothing uh, breaking here just from uh, the statement of Dr. Sam, but it's always good to know and refresh your mind that they are exploring the in vivo programs. We saw what happened with Antilia breaking this new era in genome editing uh, last month uh, through the publishing of their first set of human data in in vivo for phase one. Uh, which obviously broke grounds. So a lot, a lot of companies uh, really had their value uh, pumped because of it. And obviously, we've seen sort of uh, a small correction since then. But uh, it is what it is. So it's really interesting that uh, Dr. Sam is reiterating that they are exploring in vivo and they will find for file for INDs in the next, uh, basically in the next two years, right? Um, multiple of them. 
And obviously their partnerships with these types of companies, also amazing. Uh, again, again, they reiterate the upfront payment they got from Vertex. We already covered that. Uh, and we'll cover what's mostly important about that upfront pay, pay, um, payment in just a second here. I just wanna run it to really reiterate that they dosed more than 45 patients across the program for CTX001 up to date. Uh, and as of now, Look at this. The companies anticipate the companies and as that's between CRISPR Therapeutics and Vertex achieve target enrollment in both studies in the third quarter of 2021, which regulatory filings possible in the next 18 to 24 months. Right. So this is a really interesting statement, right? Um, very interesting, guys. So this means that he the company is really looking forward for some sort of regulatory filings specifically with CTX001 in the next 18 to 24 months against that's two years we believe 2022 will be the year the FDA approves uh, CRISPR as the first drug by CTX001 and this is mainly due to the progress because of the recent pandemic we saw how our, our mRNA vaccines got out so it's really really potential possible that 2022 is the year they're expecting two years. We'll see what happens. Um, they did mention a lot in the past that they are in constant conversation with FDA regulators in terms of costs, in terms of delays, reduce costs, reduce delays. And again, that benefits the whole space, right? Not just this company, not just this program, CTX01, but all of the genome editing companies, right? And you're looking at these other programs here, for their CAR-T programs. And again, Nothing really breaking here other than the fact that they expect to, re they expect to report top line data for tr these trials in 2021, right? So again, we are in the, basically the eighth month of 2021. So in the next four months, it looks like they will be reporting data for their CAR-T programs, which is uh, extremely interesting. Again, it's everything is on track. Everything is on record already. Nothing new, hard, uh, nothing uh, breaking in terms of news, but it's always nice to reiterate those types of uh, uh, announcements and sort of have this expect expectation set for investors such as us that, yeah, data is coming and that's what you want to see for this, this type of company. Uh, you want to see these companies to uh, stick uh, to, the, to their guns, you know, stick to the plan, and that's exactly what they're doing. And here in May, oh yeah, in May they announced their partnership for those two diseases. I believe ALS was one of them. So nothing, um, nothing new here, but really interesting. So here, obviously, they're talking about their in vivo programs, and I'll let you guys really go over that uh, if you're interested. But they have several partnerships, especially specifically with type one diabetes with Viacite. We talked about how type 2 diabetes is obviously the most severe case in diabetes that most of you are aware about. But if you can tackle type 1 diabetes, then the next step obviously is type 2 diabetes, right? But you've got to start somewhere. So that's exactly what they're doing here. And I, I wanted to really focus really on their cash position, guys. Look at this. two point, Almost $2.6 billion, right? $2.6 billion they have right now cash and cash equivalents right now as we speak in the bank which is absolutely amazing and i think for a company that is very r d focused that is very focused on burning cash through several of these programs has expected uh, and they don't have any commercial product this is a green light for this company and the other companies in this space as well right CRISPR therapeutics is not the only one we saw what Antelia did with raising the funds beam therapeutics as well uh, other companies as well have run, uh, raised funds through the public markets, but their latest revised partnership with Vertex basically gave them the green light. And to me, this is basically allowing this company to explore further, add further programs, add more headcount, basically invest more in the company. That's what you want to see for an uh, R&D focused company. You burn cash l short term in the next two, three, four years, but in the long term, capitalize on those future potential through those commercial products. Hopefully that will come on the market at some point um, as the FDA potentially approves them. And again, they don't really have much choice uh, to prove them if the data keeps coming in positive, right? At some point, you got to, you know, you got to wonder, you know, what is the FDA going to do? You know, you, you have people dying from diseases, from sickle cell diseases, beta thalassemia in the U.S. alone. 
and just this company can't cover all these cases. So you need other companies to jump in as well. So the FDA has to look into this. They have to uh, consider this, right? And that's exactly what CRISPR Therapeutics iterated uh, in a recent presentation that they were in constant communication with the FDA regulators. And that's what you want to see, right? Uh, so this is their presentation, their pretty presentation. It's honestly, it's nothing new here. I've, I went over it briefly. Everything was already reported in the past, so I'll skip over this. But if you're curious, do look in their in investor presentation. So you don't have to only look at the press release. You can look at pretty graphs if you're more of a visual person. What I also wanted to talk about in this video is Caribou Biosciences, right? So. This is the latest action as of we speak, and you know the company is sort of. It's been a little bit of a roller coaster here. It started hot on last Friday in the IPO, it sort of dropped since then, sideways since then, uh, and we know RG added before the IPO. They bought secondary shares, but they never really added since Friday uh, to their position. To that, they still hold the amount of shares that they do. You can confirm that in the holdings uh, PDF uh, for RG fund. So. What's really interesting, guys, is the Motley Fool, right? The Motley Fool article here. Three reasons Caribou Biosciences could be the best gene editing stock for your portfolio, right? So let's go over that. And look at this, guys. Key points. And Motley Fool, again, I know some of you may have your opinions on, on this type of platform, this type of media. Uh, but I actually watched uh, one of their co-founders' uh, interview with Dave Lee on YouTube um, and I just love the way he approaches things. I think he uh, he is very, very um, dedicated into finding specific companies that can revolutionize the world, they move humanity forward. And that's exactly why you see these companies pop up in terms of articles. This isn't the first time we talk about a, a genome editing company published in po Motley Fool's uh, website. So over here, they're talking about how, you know, Caribou has direct roots into the discovery CRISPR, we know this from their founder that was directly affiliated with Jennifer Doudna. Uh, it has de developed a more reliable approach to editing genes. So that's obviously the Chardonnay's RDNA technology, proprietary technology that only Caribou Biosciences own. And they believe that it improves efficiency, reduces off targets, and therefore is a better technology than the first generation CRISPR technology that CRISPR Therapeutics uses for CTX001, for example. And of course, Caribou Biosciences, they have off the shelves. That means that customers and patients don't have to wait three, four, six weeks before getting their uh, drug uh, injected. They can actually get it off the shelf. And that is obviously less cost, you know, and, you know, you can run the mat on that for uh, if you don't understand. So why off the shelf is just better, right? In some cases, but the company has easily raised money. Yes, so they. I actually mentioned that they raised. Um, uh, I forgot to actually add up in my IPO analysis video that they raised uh, over three hundred million dollars through the IPO. So that's additional money that they have in the bank. So they're pretty good in terms of cash in the bank, just like CRISPR Therapeutics and these companies. You know, they're getting momentum from that Antilia uh, in vivo. Uh, first set of data and a lot of companies raise funds and obviously Caribou Biosciences, they actually left the private markets and entered the public markets since then. So they benefited really, really well from that. So the article really talks about, you know, the history of Chardonnay's technology, the history of this company. And obviously we've had a whole video analyzing this company, the IPO, the history of it, this the legendary CEO. Uh, Rachel Harwitz, that I, I really want to sort of make a video on, on her and on her latest uh, virtual conferences. Like They get like barely 200 views on YouTube. I, I really do think she's underrated in, in this space. I think a lot of people are sleeping on Caribou Biosciences. They're sleeping on this CEO. I think she's amazing for this company. And this article is exactly saying that to us, right? Uh, that, you know, they, they're in good hands in terms of leadership. And it is expected to publish their first set of data in 2022. We know this for CBO 010. They actually just recently dosed their first patient. So that's going to take some time for data to come in. It's 2022. So again, it's just in a few months, guys. We're already in the eighth month of, uh, of, uh, of this year. So time goes fast, right? A lot of interest from Wall Street. We know this Wall Street. They sort of got involved in this, especially since Antilia posted the data. We saw how CNBC, they tried to cover it. 
and Tilia, which to me, in my opinion, was a mess. They they have absolutely no idea what gene editing is. They have no idea what CRISPR is. And but you know, ultimately, that's what you expect. You know, these are legacy analysts, legacy media, and for them, they want your clicks, they want your views, and they'll get anything that's flashy. When Antilia was up fifty percent on that Monday when they released their data the day before, um, they had to cover it. So, uh, but what's really interesting is I, I was watching this interview. Um, all the all in podcast between Chamat, which is obviously a billionaire, with other billionaires such as Jason, uh, early investor in Uber, early investor in Robinhood, and the other guys as well. Um, and basically, they talked about CRISPR. So that's their latest episode. Maybe I'll make a video on this, uh, just my review on that. Uh, so CRISPR, the technology is starting to get traction, guys. Like we covered this in the past few months, and of course, if you're in this bubble in this community. You may think this is normal. Of course, people know about CRISPR, but guys, we are so early in the space, so so early, right? And you see these types of articles, you see these types of podcasts from Chamad and his guy, his billionaire friends, um, and mentioning CRISPR. I think it's starting to get traction, right? So, highly advise you guys to to look into this uh, and re- keep reading these articles. And again, Caribou Biosciences is, is just one of the many. There's other companies as well we covered as well, Verve Therapeutics. Graphic bioscience. These are the second. To me, these are like the second gen of public market genome editing companies coming in the public markets, getting traction, opening up uh, the eyes of many investors, and uh, it's it's just you know it's just great for the space. And we believe there will be many many winners. And I think the biotech space is just growing in overall, especially due to the pandemic. But specifically with genome editing companies in genomics, uh, we know the BNGO. Uh, is also growing, and you have all these companies like QSI, and um, this is so much things are going on in this, and you know it's really hard to cover everything in one particular video or just a few videos. So that's what we do in this channel, guys. We try to do uh, cover these companies one by one, or try to do our best to cover them. So hopefully you guys appreciate it. Uh, and I wanted to end this video really quickly on Facebook's uh, second quarter results and i know a lot of you are not fans of uh, facebook and obviously you know it is what it is they they brought their reputation on their own on themselves you know it, it, you know i'm not going to defend their reputation not at all but i, I use this uh, sentence a lot um, social justice warriors hate facebook but investors love facebook right so what does that mean right um investors have you know, love Facebook for the longest time. Look at this; these results from the second quarter, right? Year over year, right? Advertising grew 56%. Total revenue, 56 This is crazy, guys. Like, these are in billion. Um, these are, um, these are like, it says 29,000, but this is actually in millions. So this is like $29 billion in one quarter. I mean, this is crazy, guys. This is huge growth, like, you cannot expect this type of growth in this type of market cap company. And I, I think this is just mind blowing, right? And I wanted to cover this really quickly because I just wanted to share my thoughts here. Look at these numbers. Like, this is crazy. And, and uh, Mark Zuckerberg, the CEO and founder of Facebook, he said how he expects this company now to become, uh, like it, as he says here, the next computing platform coming together to start a vision of a metaverse to life, right? The metaverse of Facebook is no longer shifting away from the whole social media uh, narrative. And they want to go through a whole narrative of computing platform to sort of transform to the metaverse, right? It's so, so crazy, guys. It's just amazing what they're doing here, like in terms of numbers, like I think like the family, so they obviously own Instagram, they obviously own uh, WhatsApp and uh, Oculus as well. But just the family of apps that they have, look at this, guys. 3.5 billion people use one of those apps every month. That's just amazing, guys. This is crazy. Like We have like, I think we're under 8 billion citizens around the world. So they still have room to go. But that is just a crazy number, right? And food for thought, like... What happens when Facebook allows crypto payments, right, on Messenger or on Instagram or WhatsApp? What happens when they allow Bitcoin transactions through the Lightning Network, right? Food for thought, you know, you open this network to billions of people, right? So it's just mind-boggling what I'm seeing here, guys. 
uh, it gets your mind wondering, you know, even when you get this big as a company, there's so much room out there, so many opportunities to even grow further. And again, I know some people hate Facebook, but numbers don't lie, guys. These are huge numbers. And uh, I just think this is amazing what I'm seeing here. Again, not financial advice. You guys have to do your own research, but this is just amazing, guys. Uh, I just wanted to cover or share my thoughts on Facebook. Had nothing to do with genomics, nothing to do with genome editing companies, but I just want to really cover that. And I know some of you guys also noticed that uh, in their uh, press release yesterday. So hopefully you guys appreciate this video. If you did, do like this video, smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't. And if you have any comments about Caribou Biosciences, CRISPR Therapeutics earnings or report yesterday, or just what do you expect from this genomics um, space, gene, gene editing space? What are the next companies you guys are looking into investing? What are the companies in gene, gene editing you guys are looking into further? Leave it in the comments below, guys. I, I want to hear you guys. I want to hear you guys comment, feedback. Uh, put that comment in. Again, just a few tags, a few words, you know, a few seconds of your lives. But uh, maybe it'll help someone else. You know, people read comments, uh, especially on YouTube. The comments section is very important. Uh, people read comments. People try to learn from comments. I know I read not just my own video comments, but other people's video comments too, because I want to see what people are doing. So leave it a comments below, guys. Uh, hit it. I know some of you already do that, but thank you very much for the support for those who do. And those who are going to do it, thank you very much again. So thanks for watching, guys, and have a beautiful day. Thank you very much.